You're gonna have to bear with me for a while on this one because what we're gonna tie is a, a pipe jig, but it's going to have a, a soft plastic attachment for the back of it, and we're gonna end up with a big fly, maybe 10, 12 inches long. And it's gonna take a little while to tie. So uh, I have here. Uh, this is a Mustad uh, power jig hook. This is a 35 gram, but uh, there's a variety of different sizes available. So we take our uh, our gel spun and attach it on the rear portion here. Now, I'm going to get a length of uh, this is tiger wire. going to tie that in pointing forwards doubled over then flip that back and fold it down and tie that on the top back as far as the bend of our hook plan here is to attach a soft plastic but also to leave it uh, that it is interchangeable. So uh, what I'm going to use here is one of these Prorex screws. Get one out of the packet here. So this is our, this is our screw attachment here. As you see this has like a corkscrew uh, and then we'll screw that into our, our soft plastic bit and attach that. And then if it ever gets damaged you can just take that off and replace it with another one. So what I'm going to do is attach one of these to it and you can see this thing's about 10 inches long as it is. So stick the uh, Stick the point of the screw in there. And spiral that. Back into the soft plastic. And what I'm doing is leaving the eye of it uh, in a sort of a horizontal plane. Regards the the way the, the fish itself lies. So I'm going to turn this, because this thing's going to fish upside into it, down, because the jig is going to turn this upside down. Put the uh, doubled over wire through that, and then I'm going to pull that up tight to the back of our fly, and leave this thing hanging out the back. Now you could just tie it with and put the uh, put the screw itself in and leave it like that ready to be sorry ready to have the uh, soft plastic of your own choice put into it. But, uh, just for purposes of illustration, we're doing this. So I uh, folded that back again, and then I'm going to tie this back until it tightens down on the eye of our screw. And then just let a bit of glue soak in through all those wrappings. Now, this portion here happens to be long enough accept a uh, rattle. And these ones here that have, have a little neck on them. So what I'm going to do is come back to this point here, put on a few wraps over that and then go forward till about halfway along our Our 
rattle and wrap over that too, keeping it on this upside. And again, allow super glue to run down through all those wraps and hold that in place. At this point, if you want, you can over wrap that with some sort of silvery dubbing if you want. Not totally necessary because there's going to be a lot of dressing materials at the front. If you feel like it, wrap it into it now while that is uh, while that super glue is wet. So now, it, because we have these little uh, grooves, I'm going to get into the first one. Lay on a few wraps, and then here I want to put in some uh, the first of our buck. Take this hot orange bucktail. I'll set that on in the groove and then allow it to sort of splay out around. So, hopefully, whenever I pull tight, it will not fall apart. that upside down and so another bunch of the same using gel spun allows you to really pull down tight on that sort of ends. I'm going to tidy up a little bit but it doesn't really matter much because you're going to glue them in place and, uh, and over wrap. So I get super glue all around those cut ends. So I'll just change the way the camera's pointing because we're tying upside down in the vise. At this point you can start to add bits and pieces of flash if you want. So I'm going to use a, a heavy holographic silver here. Just take two strands, flip them underneath there, and then fold them back onto my tie in there. Just let that hang on top. Now take a little bit. Uh, chartreuse dubbing but any sort of silvery sort of stuff would do you there. So now we're in the second groove um, so we're going to go again with uh, bucktail here and again that'll just help to give us uh, volume to this fly but uh, we're now going to start to think about the uh, sort of colour scheme of it so I'm going to use white underneath and I'm going to use chartreuse on top. So I've got a real long white book down here. I'll take that. And if I want to get more volume this time, I'm going to tie it in the other way around. So this is the belly of the fly as such. So I'm going to flip that over, hold my white bunch on top. And then we'll take a short truce bucktail, take a good whack of that for the top.
loop across it. Push those back. And the gel spun allows you to pull down tight into that. Splay it all out. And then we fold it backwards. over that to hold it in position while I sort of fold it back and down and then super glue all around that and the actually the, uh, the sort of lead part of the jig actually sort of lends itself to allowing super glue to run down into your tying portion. I think of the silver. If I take off my wraps, hopefully our bucktail will hold a sort of a splay to it. Two strands here becomes four. Let one lay down each side. I also want to get this is sort of a like a two millimeter pearl, about six or eight strands here. I'm just going to misline them a little bit. I'm using heavier tinsels than I do in some of the pike flies because uh, I don't really want it to tangle up. So much the finer stuff would be more prone to doing that, so the thicker stuff should be less prone to tangling. But I really like uh, Mirage Crinkle, so I'm going to put in a couple of strands of it. Now it is quite fine, but it really has a nice flash to it. A little bit of super glue into the tie-ins of that. So, next I'm going to take a, a chartreuse grizzle. This is a magnum tape. I'm going to take out two feathers of that. And I'm going to set these on sort of on the sides, and the side on the upper side of the sides so that they'll create like a back to the fly. Swap to using uh, Nayat or uh, Icelandic sheep. Now, this is a really long but coarse fibred natural fibre, and uh, if you don't have it, just use synthetic fibre, like, but it just it has a nicer taper to it, I find. So Turn my fly upside down, place on a bunch of that on the top, which is the underneath because it's upside down. Pull that down in. Splay it out. Now what I want this to do is splay to roughly the sort of uh, halfway around the shank. 
flip it over again. And I'm going to use uh, this is a like a fluorescent green with the same material. Take out a good bunch of that too. And then we'll pull out this some of this under for our stuff. You can use that for dubbing on something else if you want. And then set that up. Up. A couple of loops to hold in place, and then what I'm going to do is pull that down to meet the weight on each side. And a few tight wraps in behind. I said, Don't worry about this stuff here. If you want, you can cut it off, but it's not necessarily because it will actually give you some bulk to the fly and help splay these materials out. So now I'm taking my tie silk up through the junction between the white and the green to get it in front. impale myself. I'm going to stroke all that back. And then I'm going to put a few wraps just over this just to keep this all out of the way. While again I allow the glue to run down the run down the lead ball into the, the tangs of that. Sure. Uh, you can finish fly off like that if you feel like it, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little bit neater at the head and I'm going to put on uh, a black portion on the top and I'm going to put a white portion underneath like a throat and uh, part of the reason behind the black is that I think it'll set off the eyes better whenever I add them to it. Sure. I'm going to take uh, some craft fur to do that. Take a white, I said for underneath, so a good bunch of that, and then I'm going to get rid of this fluff, the short stuff. And I'll end up then with a flattish sort of a bunch. So I'll flip my fly up. As you can see, the uh, Icelandic sheep wants to start to splay itself out again. So we're set on our bunch, pointing backwards to overlap by 5 mil or so. And get a lap over all of that. As you pull it then, it'll sort of settle down. stuff if you're going to do this here otherwise just use arctic fox or something like that there same thing with the black remove the under fur and then set that up a little bit awkward set that up on the top put a loose lap over it pulls down and just check that it goes to roughly halfway around. If you want more you can add small bunches. 
just to even it out. Is to tie that in. Now, if you want to be fussy, this is white tying thread, so I'd leave it white on the bottom, but just up here on the sort of top portion, which was tying in the black, I'll just colour that bit in black. Before we cut off our tie and silk, we can just put on a few wraps over the whole dress and just to hold that out of the way. And then let the super glue run. Down the ball and onto the tying silk and just into the start of the materials. And leave that side set for a little bit. So I'm going to glue eyes onto it but say there's a lot of super glue on that there so it'll take actually quite a while for that to uh, for that to dry. So we shall just take that away. or so along there. I suppose when that stretches out you're probably over a foot. So I'm going to stick on some eyes to that. Sure. big you go but these are these are what 15 millimeter eye or something. I'm going to use my usual which is Evo Stick Serious Glue here although you can use uh, whatever you want basically to put that on put a good blob glue onto the back of the eye. said it's not as neat it's just to fold a little lip of the glue onto the eye to stop it from delaminating do the same on your side Our 
big soft plastic jig and there's only one hook in that so another option you have uh, is to add a stinger so you can buy these things these are sort of like ready made little attachments for I suppose for normal softs and jigs so this has come with an 11 centimeter uh, wire and on the end of it if you can see is a little loop and you can pass that over the eye of your jig and then take this back and set it into your soft plastic now what I would probably do is to shorten that up by maybe an inch or so. Uh, just make a new loop in it and a, a new crimp. And that will leave us. Take this out of the way. with a big soft plastic jig and uh, you can cast that on a, on a bait caster setup or troll it I suppose given the weight of it so as I said long sort of a video but hopefully worth it